Hi, and welcome to the book bar where everything bookish is on the menu. I'm Ann Jeanette Barr, and today I thought I would tell you my favorite so far um, adult books set in the state of Alaska. For those of you who are new to the channel, thank you so much for coming and watching. I hope that you like this video if you like it and subscribe so that you see more bookish content. And as the um, channel name suggests, this is the book bar and I always have a drink of some kind. Lately they have been trending more alcoholic <laughs> as they as it will today, but I always try and choose a, um, a drink that matches the book or books that I'm reading. So today... I'm going to have a gin and tonic. It's juniper gin and tonic flavored with rhubarb from an awesome distillery here in Juneau, Alaska. So um, I had, I've already tried this um, last week. It was so good. Uh, and they make all, all different kinds. Rhubarb grows really well here. So since this is a local um, drink and it has local rhubarb, I thought it'd be a good fit for Alaskan books. Cheers. So um, there are a lot of books set in Alaska, obviously. A lot of them tend toward survivalist stories. Um, and I did read a lot of those as a kid. And some of my favorite Alaskan books for children are along that theme. And I'll make a separate video about those sometime. But a lot of us Alaskans <laughs> get tired of the books set in Alaska always being about the extreme conditions. And so I did not include any of those in this list, um, partially because, again, a lot of those that I read were for children, and also uh, the ones that I've read as, as an adult have not been my favorites. So I just chose four books to talk about today, and I will put the title and author in the description below. And I'm going to start with my most recent read. I just finished this book. I absolutely loved it. It is definitely on my um, list, obviously, of favorite Alaskan books, but it's it's up there in my favorite nonfiction as well. And that book is Of Bears and Ballots by Heather Lindy. Heather Lindy is an author who lives not too far from here in the city of Haines. Um, Haines is in southeast Alaska, like Juneau, and you can't get to well, anywhere from Juneau uh, with the road because there are no roads out of Juneau. Um, but you can get to Haines through the Alaska Marine Highway, um, uh, which is the ferry system. And then you can actually take the road out of Haines and go either um, east <laughs> through Canada or northwest, I guess, um, up into the rest of Alaska. So Haines is kind of the gateway to the rest of Alaska rest of Alaska for Junoites, although most Junoites would rather than take that whole trip, just fly out of Juneau um, at our airport or take the ferry down to Bellingham in Washington. Um, all that to say, she feels like a very local author because Juneau and Haines are not very far apart. And actually she has family who lives here and talks um, about them a lot in her books. Um, she is uh, a writer, obviously, um, and she has a history of writing in newspapers, and particularly she wrote uh, and writes obituaries for residents in Haines, and that led to some opportunities. She, she did other writing as well at the same time, but her obituaries were the um, topic of her first, I'm pretty sure, book called If You Lived Here. If You Lived Here, I'd Know Your Name, and that was such a, such a great book. I really enjoyed that. Um, just about the about life in a small town, about the things people remember um, when you die, <laughs> you know, just like the way people express themselves about you, that kind of legacy you leave. And she just she's a very poignant writer. So this one um, I liked even more than that, and she has two other books as well, um, because this one. I feel like it's a little bit different side of her. This it chronicles her term um, as an assembly woman in Haines. And um, if you're unfamiliar with um, 
the assembly system. The, our um, Juno and Haines are both the city and this is the city and borough of Juno. And the type of government we have has um, an assembly that makes that includes the mayor that makes all the you know decisions, uh, and that those people are elected officials who get sworn in on a rotation every two or three years. She talks about it in here. Um, I was very unfamiliar with this system of, of governing before um, I moved to Juneau. And um, we also have a city manager and a deputy city manager who are not elected and they also help make those decisions. And she talks about that a lot in the book too. Um, I've been paying a lot more attention to um, city government, um, especially throughout the pandemic. My husband has been working with them and um, it has been eye-opening and it's been interesting. So when I found out that she wrote a book about her experience, and I actually hadn't heard through the grapevine about her experience. I didn't know if this would be a positive or negative account. And uh, I knew that I would want to buy this book, but I didn't get around to it until just recently. And just recently I've been watching every assembly meeting <laughs> via Zoom, um, the world we live in. And I could just picture everything that she talked about from watching those meetings. And I personally would absolutely never want to be on the assembly, but just hearing, I want to say the drama, but it's not just the drama. It's the, the very minute details that have to be considered before any decision is made and how, because we're human, those can affect us, right? So whether or not you're familiar with the type of government um, system that we have, or if you pay much attention to local governance at all, um, in general, this book, um, talking about, I guess the way I would sum it up is, it's a book about um, what happens when you are in government making decisions for the constituents that you know well, because this is a small town and she knows everyone that is affected by these decisions she she makes and made. And just really interesting how we can agree on some things and be diametrically opposed on others and how that affects our relationships. Um, she's just an excellent writer and she writes with such grace but also um, vulnerability and explains just how raw and really traumatic being in public office can be. Um, I highly suggest this for everyone, but especially if you're interested in learning a little bit more about life in a smaller town in Alaska. And then switching gears to fiction for my next three books. Um, one that I read just not too long after I moved here that is still on my top favorites list that I do not own physically is um, Two Old Women by Velma Wallace. I'm going to put the picture up here and I'm just going to read um, the plot summary or a little bit of it from Wikipedia <laughs> uh, to, to give you a taste of what this book is about. It says, long before the Europeans came, nomads roamed the polar region of Alaska in constant search for game. Um, and then it talks about um, these particular uh, Alaska natives who lived along the Yukon River um, were an example of this, uh, of, of a nomadic group. And um, they, um, they move via the season, right? They have to follow the fish. They have to, to follow the, the source of food. And it says, um, because of a lack of food and an upcoming strict winter, one of these nomad groups decides to leave behind two old women in the snow covered wilderness, left back and dumbfounded in fright, 75 year old and 80 year old women these two women, main characters remained seated in the snow after the leader announced the decision to the tribe. And then it goes on, the, the story is about how these two old women, who have basically been left to die, um, have to decide whether or not they will die, or if they can kind of summon enough energy and, um, you know, wisdom from years past to make it through this winter. And it's both a book about life in Alaska in times gone by, and a book about just the resolve of the human spirit and um, about how our perspective shapes our reality. I just found it so um, 
relatable, even though these are two old women living a completely different lifestyle and a completely different history um, t time period than me, um, and even in a different part of Alaska, because this would be northern part of Alaska. I found it so relatable because the way the author described these women's interior lives and then also how they had to relate to each other as these two, you know, kind of it is a survival story, I guess, but um, it's not like they got dumped in Alaska and now they don't know what to do. They ha it's, it's just more about choosing to go on or not and what makes us make those decisions. It's a very slim book and it doesn't take long to read, but it's very, very impactful. So um, definitely pick that one up. And my last two books I'm going to show you at the same time because they're by the same author. Yet again, an Alaskan author. So Ao and Ivy has fast become one of my very top, all-time favorite, I just love her, authors. <laughs> so sorry for fangirling, but um, I'll show you her signature. That's, that's the level of appreciation we have here. Look! <laughs> so there is a dedicated video to this um, book here on my channel uh, because I read it just this year. And this was her second book published and I'll, I'll tell you about it second. Her first book published is The Snow Child and this was nominated for, okay I had to double check, it was a finalist for the 2013 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and definitely deserving of it. So um, The Snow Child is about a couple um, attempting to homestead in the Alaska wilderness um, and it is much less about Alaska than about this couple, but Alaska just makes the perfect, enchanting, and also unforgiving at times backdrop to what's really going on inside of them. So again, it's it's one it's it's a book that's um, contemplative about human nature, and I just love it. It's also a book full of magical realism. So it is um, kind of uh, loosely based on a fairy tale, and. Uh, these this couple Jack and Mabel um, who are dealing with a lot of grief and loss and also miscommunication and depression and all kinds of things in their marriage wake well they decide to make a snow person together and they wake up one the next morning and the snow person is gone but there's this little girl like a real live little girl and uh, lots of magical things and and interesting and and not easy to sort out things for them happen in the book um, and I won't spoil the ending but um, it's such a cool look at how these people um, are working out their own grief um, while also being an interesting fast-paced read um, like I said with magical realism and set in Alaska and I can just still picture some of the scenes um, in the book even though it's been I don't know five years or something that I read it one in particular where she is walking across a frozen river and if you've it doesn't have to be Alaska if you live anywhere where the rivers freeze over um, you know that there's that certain time of year where you don't want to go out anymore because the ice is too thin and she's walking across it and it's just really too late in the year and it's cracking under her feet and just the way Eowyn writes it still has my blood pressure kind of up so um, I loved this book and then she followed this book up with To the Bright Edge of the World um, which is an epistillary yeah, I think I said it right that time. <laughs> if you watch my videos, you know I can't say that word. <laughs> Novel. Um, so it's written uh, with multiple narrators, all writing letters, um, uh, newspaper articles, journal entries. It's that kind of format, but done really, really well. It's not choppy at all. Um, following a man sent out on an expedition to map um, this river, which is actually a, a, a made-up river, but it... Um, corresponds to a certain area in Alaska um, in the 1800s and he's trying to map up further into Alaska than white man has been able to map before and he's so he's on this expedition and it's based on some um, true facts about expeditions like this that happened but again there's tons of magical realism things that happen that just have no explanation as they get close like further and further into this um, 
wilderness that no Europeans have seen before. And there's a female protagonist as well, and she's dealing with her own things. Again, depression, loss are themes in these, and that may sound like they're, <laughs> they're um, sad books, but just she's just such an insightful writer. I did not at all leave either of these books feeling hopeless. I, I left feeling like I had really gotten to know the characters and that the characters were really real, and life especially these days, or maybe always, <laughs> life always, but I feel it these days, is complicated and hard. So um, this is more of an adventure story uh, than the other one was. The other one was more domestic, but also very, very good, and it just has a different feel, but I loved it. I loved it. So those are my top recommendations for books set in Alaska, about Alaska, for adults, and I would love your recommendations. I know there, Alaska is a favorite setting. I have quite a, a to-read list um, of Alaskan books that I have gotten recommended to me, and I own several of them, and I hope I, I get through them and can give you an updated list at some point, but there's always room for more on my list, so tell me what you have read that is set in Alaska, and leave me a comment and tell me what you're reading now, and as always, tell me what's in your cup.